What's up, see you all outdoors. Here we are. November something. Losing track of days. November 15th. Oh. Tell you what. It has been one heck of a deer season. I hope you guys can see me all right. Um, it's, it's been something. It's definitely been something. I, uh, a lot of bow hunting. I think I started mid-October and deer sightings for me have just been terrible. Um, I'm doing okay. I, I had one shooter buck come in. Looked right at me in the stand, and he turned around and walked the other way. He's probably a 140, 150. Um, but other than that, I, I, I had another 9 point. It's either a 9 or a 10. I got two of them on camera. I can't, couldn't figure out which one he was. But he came in. I, I threw an arrow at him uh, last week, and shot looked good to me. It was back. He was quartering away. I should have drove right into that other shoulder. He ran away. He had my arrow. I didn't have a lot of penetration, and, you know, there wasn't a lot of blood either. Um, not a lot of blood, some bubbles. Tracked this deer 150 yards and, and it just stopped. I mean, this thing just disappeared. Uh, he, he disappeared essentially 50 yards from a field on either side of him, or he went deeper into the, into the timber. But, you know, I had, I had some help and, and we could not figure out where this deer went. It's, there's a lot of tracks in there, a lot of trails in there and the snow was melting that we had that day and just couldn't figure it out so still on with the grind i'm not going to hunt today i may go move a stand um, i'm definitely going to move that stand that 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 bigger buck picked me out of this is a deer i've, I've seen for two or three years um, and just as much as i had decided i was going to shoot him this year if i got a chance it was like he knew that as well he saw me in the stand and he went the other way so no big deal um we're gonna kind of switch gears here a little bit. The one thing I do notice a lot of when I'm sitting in a tree stand and I'm looking at Facebook or Instagram or whatever is is the post about how do you keep your feet warm? Not necessarily to me, but just asking kind of the general hunting community. But they're asking, you know, how do you keep your feet warm? Cold feet drive me out of the stand. Cold hands, how do you keep your hands warm? What do you do when you're holding your bow? Questions like that, and I, and I agree, cold feet will, will push me out of a stand. It will beat my spirits down. It makes it next to impossible to sit still. Um, you're constantly shifting your legs, and it just it makes you less productive as a hunter. And it just it makes it, it really, to me, it makes it miserable. It starts to hurt, and it's just it's not worth the time to sit there with frozen toes and to know that when you get down and at about five minutes the feet are going to be warm again but you've just ruined your area so um i'm going to kind of break down what i do i've been doing this now for about five years and it has saved me numerous times it has allowed me to put in all day sits in 10 degree weather um, or colder and it has allowed me to sit still and sit comfortable and it's it's really simple and it's not that expensive I'll also talk about what I do with my hands and just kind of how I prefer to do things, how I prefer to keep my hands warm because, again, cold hands, that makes it tough. It makes it tough to hold your bow when the deer's coming in. It makes it tough to, to uh, squeeze off a steady shot. So I do this for me. It's a system I've started using for my, for my kids and my fiance when they're in the woods. So I'll show you guys what it is. It's no big secret. Um, it's just you just don't hear about it very much. So it almost seems like a secret. I mean, these things have been around forever. They're just the Arctic Shield, uh, they call them boot blankets. And I mean, every one of these posts that you see, you know, how do you keep your feet warm? Everybody says this, they, you know, you see things like Mickey Mouse boots and those, I think those are nice. I'd be interested in trying them, but um, for for cost efficiencies right now, this is, this is what I'm using. Um, and I'll go through, you know, how I do it, what I do with them, and what I think of them, and and how I pack them up, carry them, and things like that. So, essentially, this thing, you know, it, it just slips over your boot. It's it's it is exactly what it says. It is a boot blanket. Um, if you look at these things online and it describes them, or I don't know if I have a box of these in here somewhere, but essentially, it's made up of a material that is designed to trap the heat, reflect the heat back in onto your boot, um, onto your foot. And I, I truly believe I could sit 
and my moccasins and these things and my feet would probably stay fairly warm um, but what I do know is that th there is a downside maybe it's not a downside but what I what I learned the hard way was I bought these things I think they're like 50 bucks but I bought them and instantly you know I went hunting I threw them on I had I think I was wearing like a thousand grain um, it was either a Rocky or a Cabela's Cabela's boot leather boot and I put these on and, and you know the same amount of time my feet got just as cold I was really frustrated um, and so I got online I started looking doing like everybody else does we have a great community as far as hunters and sharing information and I uh, you know what are guys doing why aren't these working this is this is silly and I think I started with actually with the website that I bought them from um, and it recommended you wear a thinner boot um, the thicker boots don't breathe as well your heat doesn't actually escape through them so that's when I went out and I put on a 600 grain boot it was the lightest boot I had aside from a rubber boot I didn't think a rubber boot was gonna let my heat out either so I went with the 600 grain I think that, that's a Cabela's brand boot and my feet stayed warmer longer uh, it was definitely better but they still got cold still a little frustrating so what I figured out was you take one of these hot hands or one of these hand warmers whatever brand you want to get and I set that inside here on top of my boot and I set it right here either on the toe or on the laces and it actually gets to a point where my feet are too hot now it's not uncomfortable it's not gonna take me out of the stand it's the exact opposite of all of that but I was really surprised like holy cow my feet are warm and I think that day it was it was the first year I used them so it was like zero or two or three degrees it was the middle of the road it was a really cold year I want to say that was like 2014 maybe and I mean it was cold there was snow on the ground um, only downside is you don't want to go walking around in the woods with these. I've climbed out of the stand with them on before to check an arrow that I, I sent through a deer. And, you know, it they rip. They're like walking around the woods in a sock. And little sticks and stuff poke through them. And these are getting kind of worn. But not a big deal. Aside from that, the soft bottom, super quiet on the stand. You don't hear these things at all. Um, but, uh. I, I absolutely love these things. You guys got to check them out. They're from Arctic Shield. I recommend them to anybody that struggles with cold feet. So, like I said, what I do with them, these aren't the right size boot, but um, these, these are my kids' boots. But you buy them for the size of your boot. Obviously, I wear a, I wear, a, I think I wear a 10 usually. So these come like sizes 9 to 11, and and they're pretty accurate from what I can tell. So, but what you do is you slip them in there. I take one of these hot hands and. I slide it right in there on the top of my foot and I do this right when I get in the stand there's no sense in waiting for your feet to get cold I've done that and it will warm them back up but you might as well just do it right away set that in there where I want it and then usually your shoelaces aren't in the way but you zip up the back like so and then tighten the drawstring I mean it is that simple you got this big fat boot now to keep your foot warm and it's, it has saved me a hundred times. Um, like I said, I've been using these four or five years now, and when it's cold, I don't even screw around. I just go, I, I throw them in there, and you know, about the time it's getting to that 15, 10, maybe 20, about the time you think your foot's gonna start getting cold, you know, take off the thick boots and, and throw these on and with a thinner boot or whatever. I might try them, I've got some rubber boots I might try them with, but you know, I really don't, see it see a need for it I like to wear rubber boots kind of march where I hunt and you know it helps with scent control and things like that but I don't know maybe I'll give them a try I just worry that your heat's not gonna escape but maybe maybe it'll work um, can't imagine why it wouldn't so that's what I do with my feet now my hands I don't like big bulky gloves um, see if I got a bow in here actually yeah hang on all right, this is one of my kids' bows. But I don't like big bulky gloves, um, especially on my bow hand. You know, you, you struggle sometimes to get it in your, your wrist sling, and now you've got a hold of your bow, and I don't 
I don't practice a lot with a glove on because I don't like to wear a glove. Um, and it, it can throw off your shot. It can make you catch a bow. It just makes your grip different. Um, feels different on your wrist sling, things like that. So I prefer to either wear the thinnest glove possible or uh, no glove at all. Um, so what I do now, obviously I'm going to struggle with cold hands, is I actually get away just fine with my my turkey hunting gloves. And these are the mossy oak ones. I got them at Walmart, and they're they're simply just that. They're just super thin, and they're something just to cover your hands. Um, take the glare off your hands. Obviously, you wear them for turkey hunting. It's to, it's to help conceal you with the camouflage. <laughs> but what I've learned is they are just enough to kind of keep that initial bite off your hands. So if I've got to go to grab my bow, you know, I might feel the coldness of the bow, but it's at least a little bit of protection. You know, if I'm waiting on a deer to walk in or I'm ready to take that shot, it's enough protection for that amount of time. Now, I'm not going to sit there in the woods in just these. Um, and they got the finger pads you can play on your phone, whatever, still. They're not exactly perfect, but it's it's something you want to check your phone or whatever. But um, like I said, it allows me to be able to have my hands out in the elements for a, for a short amount of time, and it does provide some warmth and then the concealment. The other part of this system I use is, I, just, I think these are called a hand muff. I don't know. I'll call it a hand blanket too, I guess. But I take one of these, and a lot of times, just stuffing my hands in here, I can, I can slide my hand in here with my release, and it's, it's wonderful. It's perfect. Keeps me right where I need to be. Um, and it keeps my hands still. I can move my hands around in here, no big deal. Colder days, again, it's got a little pocket out here. Throw a hand warmer in there, and this thing stays toasty warm. Um, a lot of times I'll keep my, my phone and my rangefinder in here as well. Or you can always just throw it in, inside. Um, and that keeps it, just like I said, toasty warm. Um, just that one, that one thing. I've got warm clothes, I've got layers, and my body can be warm. If your toes are cold and your hands are hurting because they're cold, it makes it for a long sit, especially if you're looking to do an all-day kind of deal. Um, so, like I said, that's what I do. If you guys like this video, you know, please hit that like button. Please hit a subscribe button. I know I haven't put a lot of content up lately. It's just, it's been a tough hunting season, and I really haven't had much to show you. Um, but I'm going to keep grinding here. We're, we're, we're moving through the rut pretty quick, I think. And um, it just is what it is. I've got a doe tag to fill and I've got my buck tag to fill. I may end up filling them both with doe tags. Still need meat in the freezer. Um, shotgun's coming up here in a couple weeks. I've got some kids that want to do some hunting yet. And so hopefully if I can't get any content, I can at least get content of them. So, but like I said, if you like this video, please hit the like, subscribe button, leave a comment. Maybe tell me what you do. Maybe <coughs> throw me a suggestion. I know my system's not perfect. It's what works for me. Um, just, you know, like I said, throwing it out there for the, for the people that maybe don't quite know or are, are looking for a better way and, and not saying my way is the best, but it's definitely worked for me. So hang with us. Hopefully we can bring some content to you and, and thanks for watching. See you at all outdoors.